Yes. Belfast is a beautiful city. Lots to see, lots to do. Um, can we get the music down, please? Thank you so much. Um, lots to see here in Belfast. But when you travel to Comic Cons, do you make time to actually soak up some culture and, and see parts of the town? Do you have time? If, if we can make the time, we do. Great. So and sometimes you can't. But we're going to sneak an extra day in this time because it's so special to be here. Yeah. yeah. It is so great to have you here, to come all this way. How has the fan interaction been? How is it meeting your fans here? Everybody's just so nice, like all the love. I've been so grateful. Yeah. Honestly, Belfast, you're a lovely group of people, so polite, and you had such creative questions. If you have a question for Carrie, head on over to the microphone. Don't be shy. It's right in the middle here. Come up and ask a question. But I will say, we have a lot of guests here and, and fans that want to know more about being in the entertainment business. So you having been in the business for many years, what advice would you give to someone that would like to be an actor? Um, my advice as an artist and any kind of artists, if you're an actor or writer or painter, if you love it and you're willing to do it, whether you get paid or not, then you can never not do it. It's really not your choice. So um, find a way to do what you have to do no matter what. That's, that would be my voice because you go crazy as an artist not doing your art, right? Sure. Yeah. Well, we have to talk about Goonies for a moment because yes. I was just saying backstage that, I say backstage, it was in the parking lot, <laughs> that Goonies really scared me as a kid. It's still, for some reason, I don't know, it just was a bit of a you know, mystery. What was it like working on the film? Um, it, in working on it was not scary, but <laughs> um, I, I actually get that a lot um, from parents who are excited to share it with their kids and if the kids are too young they say oh my kid got scared and I just, so it's not just me okay no, no, thank goodness give 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 uh, give them a couple of years and my kids were scared when they first saw it too yeah I it's it's funny some some kids are just you know, more sensitive to certain things, and it's just an age, yeah. an age thing. For sure. But, um, you know, there's a lot of screaming and a lot of chasing and a lot of, you know, and even though there's like fun sound effects, like cartoon sound effects yeah. happening, um, it takes a while kind of to yeah. get that, get some of those jokes. And at this point, it's an iconic film. I mean, it's, it spans yeah. so many generations. I think we have a question here in the middle. Hi there, come on up to the microphone. What's your name? Hi, Piper. Nice to meet you. Um, Kerry, if you weren't an actor, what other job would you have done? Oh, that's a good question. I'm actually not an actor right now, so I'm an editor. I've, I've stayed in the movies, but I'm behind the scenes because I love the movies. So I've been editing um, TV shows and all different kinds of videos and films and stuff. So it's uh, another way to access storytelling. So I love, I love editing. If I wasn't in the movies, I think I'd be like um, a journalist or something. Because I'm very nosy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a journalist because I'm nosy. That's so honest. I love it. Thank you, Piper. Thank you, Piper. You're Piper, do you want to be an actress one day? Oh, here we go. She yeah. wants to be an actress. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about acting and, and the audition process, but what was it like for you to be cast in Goonies? What was the process of getting the role like? Uh, well, the process then was very different from it, what it is now. So at the time I was uh, living in New Jersey, uh, I had three auditions in Manhattan, and the first one was for the casting director. The second time I came in and met Steven Spielberg. And then the third time I came in and met Richard Donner. And they were all in person. Most of it was just conversation. Um, the third time with Richard Donner, I did a scene with another actress, but it wasn't even kind of scripted. They just gave us a scenario. Okay. Um, and at that audition, uh, because we were playing girlfriends sitting on a couch, I took off my shoes so I could like sit up on the couch. Yeah. And when the audition was finished, 
you know, thank you, that was great, nice to meet you. I look down and my shoes are gone. And I kind of had this moment of like, did I, wh where, you know? And I look and Dick Donner had hid them. <laughs> and we just started laughing. And I think, you know, that was kind of that interaction that they look for, you know, would somebody get upset? I thought it was hysterical and, you know, with Dick, he loved to play jokes and you had to be able to like get his jokes yeah. and now I think as an actor you get the pages for what you're auditioning for and you put yourself on tape yeah. and then s email and send, the, send it in. So that personal connection I think is harder now for actors. Um, so, but I haven't had to do that. <laughs> There's a huge controversy about that, that self-taping is, like you said, there's not that personal touch. Do you hope that that changes, or do you think that's kind of the way it's going to be going forward? I, I do hope it changes, because it's a great burden on the actor, and you are really, um, it's almost like sending your work into a void. I yeah. spoke to an actor the other day that said, like, three months later, they got an email saying, sorry, we didn't pick you. Yeah. You know, that... Um, and I think for some actors, they go to great expense, too, to make the uh, tape look good, and you're not paid for the audition. So I think that's part of the controversy. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, I think the one good thing now is that we do have the ability with the cell phones and everything to create our own content more. And I think that's pretty exciting, but it's not the same as being part of a big production sure. and, you know, that huge collaboration yeah. and all the big budget stuff that goes into that. that. Makes total sense. We have a question right here. Oh, and a very fantastic shirt. <laughs> awesome. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering, obviously the film is such an adventure, it's so fun to watch it and it looks like so much fun, but was there any of it filming it that was not fun? Obviously there was a lot of water, you know, you were in the water a lot of time, and was there parts of it that were awful to film? <laughs> no. Difficult. Difficult. It was not. The water was fun, and it was, you know, it was inside a huge sound stage, the largest I think it's the largest soundstage in Hollywood. It's like uh, Warner Brothers Stage 16, if I remember. I don't know. I think it's what it was. Um, the water was fun. The um, I'm trying to think what wasn't fun, because that's a unique question. The well part looks like a lot of fun, and you know, sending the bucket up and down and everything. That was good. You know what? You know what I didn't always love. In all the tunnels, there was a lot of smoke. They did, you know, because there was no CGI, uh, except the the stones coming down at the end when we were escaping. That CGI, and then the the ship at the end. But everything else was real, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's still people still love watching it. Um, but they did a lot of these like smoke uh, machines. Yeah. So there were times you were like, got home, your clothes were like. Ah. But no, it, it was a it was a fun it was a fun shoot. It really was. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. Hi, Carrie. You played a very popular cheerleader in the movie, and I just wonder what you were like at school. Oh. <laughs> I was a cheerleader. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. I wasn't um, super popular, but I had I I was. I was okay. I wanted to be popular. I was, I was a girl who really wanted to be popular. So, you know, there's a, back in the 80s in America, the high schools were very much like different cliques, very clicky. Yeah. So I was kind of aspiring to be in that. Yeah. I think that's what I was like. That's embarrassing. I should be like, I was fabulous. But I was, I was a little, I was kind of dorky wishing to be fabulous, yeah. <laughs> you could totally lie and say you were the most popular and we wouldn't know. Nobody would know. Yeah, we wouldn't know. <laughs> Fun question. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. We have time for just maybe a couple more. If you guys come on up, don't be shy, ask a question. But I will say, obviously, um, talking about cheerleading and things like that, we have so many great cosplayers here. But what is it like when someone cosplays as either you or someone from Goonies? It's so much fun. Yeah. yeah. I had um, 
at the last show, um, a six foot five man dressed as Andy. Oh. And it, I, <laughs> I'll see if I can find the picture. Yeah. He was so tall, oh. had the red wig and the yellow um, sweater and the tennis skirt. It was awesome. Yeah. The, first time, the first time somebody dressed up as my character was actually somebody on the set, and it was Halloween. So she had access to all my, the actual costume. And it was very like, we, you know, it was, it, was sur it was surreal, but we also had stunt doubles running around the set constantly. So you kind of were constantly doing like a double take. You know, the people would call, see, you know, be calling the stunt double and I'd turn around or vice versa, so. Because there was a lot of physicality in the movie as well. It was such an adventure, a lot of physicality in physicality, the film. Physicality, yes. Yeah, so what, what, what was your stunt double in charge of doing that you thought, I'm not doing that, I don't want to do that? No, no, I love doing that. I love you? love doing that wow. stuff. Wow. I was, we, they only let us down the slides once. We wanted to go again and then again. Yeah. And yeah, that part, that part was fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, hello, if you're just joining us, we have a few more minutes to ask a question if you guys would like. And if not, I have a question for you. Okay. As fun as Belfast is and how much fun we're having here at Comic-Con Northern Ireland, what are you looking forward to next, whether it's professionally or personally? What comes after Belfast? Oh, okay. Well, I'm working on um, several editing projects right now that I'm very excited about, like a one feature film and a piece for PBS and different things like that. So I just try to look forward to the next thing that I have on my docket. Right. So after this, I go back to my editing cool. <laughs> system, yeah. And are you going to be sharing any of this on social media? What are your thoughts on that, sharing social media, promoting what you're doing? I have not stepped into this century. I do not have any social media. Um, but a, a piece that I did um, edit for PBS is called Protactile, P-R-O-T-A-C-T-I-L-E. And it's about um, sign language. Uh, it's a language that's based entirely on touch, created and for deafblind people. So you, you can go look that up now if you look up Protactile PBS or PBS Protactile. That's something that I recently finished. Um, someday maybe I'll get, I felt like so much pressure to have an online presence and all that stuff. And yeah. I've just been, I don't know. I know I'm, I know I'm a dinosaur. No, I know no. that's strange. It's very tedious. That's the thing. You know, now we're these people that we take pictures of our food and it just gets yeah. totally and out I'm of hand. Yeah, I'm very lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have been such a delight, and I know you have to get back to the autograph area. Yeah. Please make sure you come and say hello to Carrie, get an autograph, Thank grab you. a selfie, and please show your applause for the fabulous Carrie Green. Thank you so much. Keep it going for Carrie Green, everybody.